Well, that would make sense because God's wrath was put upon his son yes. on the cross. Yes. God's wrath for our sin. For our sin, right. Oh, a lot of people don't like that. Welcome to Voice of the Wind, conversations between a seminary student and his dad. I'm Jonathan Paul Poland, and with me is my dad, Galen Paul. Join us as we relish in God's truth and recall his faithfulness. Episode 3, The Serpent on a Pole. Yeah, hi, Dad. All right. Hi, Jonathan. So, uh, yeah, you it's have been a, a new, while. You have a new microphone. I See this? Yeah. It's a much better microphone. It sounds great. Yeah, it has been a while. It uh, has been. If the mm. audience is watching on YouTube, you can see my beard has gotten a lot bigger. <laughs> my hair has gotten longer. Oh. Hey, uh, to get things rolling, I thought I would just uh, do a little uh, a little introduction of explain what we do and why we're doing it. Fine, um, yeah, go for it. Talk about the Voice of the Wind podcast is to teach uh, expository teaching, uh, explore the meat of the Word of God, mm. uh, simplify deep topics. Okay. And sometimes use personal experience when applicable, right? Hmm. Uh, with that in, with that said, uh, last message we spent a lot of time on uh, how do we become born again? That's a deep one. But then you know we're going on today. Woohoo! We've been planning this for a while. Yeah, a ser- serpent on a pole. Right. Yeah, we were going to talk about it. Back in the day, in my day of football, everybody would, there's a lot of people that the camera would pan to the guy with the big sign saying, John 316. And that would make everybody, you know, uh, oh, John 316, let's look it up. Well, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life, right? Most famous scripture in the Bible. Right. A lot of people, most, most people, have heard of that scripture or are familiar with it, but let's back up. Uh, pull up the car in reverse. <laughs> John three fourteen. How many people know that one? I tell you, two years ago, someone would say, "Hey, do, do you know what John fourteen is?" Uh, John three fourteen. I'm like, <laughs> wow. Let me think about it. Uh-huh. Well, it's about the serpent on a pole. What <laughs> serpent on a pole? So that's what we're yeah. going to talk about today, right? Yep, the serpent on a pole. Serpent on a pole. Yeah, so, Numbers uh, 21. Right. Look it so, up, Numbers 21. Yes. So in John 3, verse 14, Jesus says, And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, mm-hmm. that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Right. And uh, this is going back to Numbers 21. So Jesus mm-hmm. Jesus is making reference to Numbers 21. Now, uh, beginning in verse 4, Numbers 21 reads, From Mount Hor, they set out by the way of the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. Mm-hmm. And the people became impatient on the way. And the people spoke against God and against Moses saying, why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we loathe this worthless food. (laughs) You imagine bread bread coming down from heaven? Yeah. And and loathing it? (laughs) Yeah. And they said it tasted like wafers of honey and coriander seed. And Oh, that's horrible. (laughs) That's horrible. And and, uh, and, uh, in the book of Psalms, it actually says they ate angels' food, the food of angels. Wow. So they, this was like bread directly from heaven. Wow. And I mean, it was obviously yeah. nutritious too because it sustained them for 40 years. No kidding. You know, so it was nutritious. And, uh, and um, they're complaining about God providing mm. this miraculous bread every day, <laughs> twice as much on Friday. So that they would have it mm. on the next day for the Sabbath. And uh, Man, I mean, wow. it's just this miraculous bread and they're complaining about it and they say it's worthless. Then verse six, the very next verse, 
the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, so that many people of Israel died. And the people came to Moses and said, Help! Help! We have sinned! <laughs> Help! We have, we have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. <laughs> we, so want the, admit, we want the precious honey and that, that heavenly angel food yeah. again. <laughs> this is an we won't say anything about it. This is an important admission by these people who oh, are coming man. to Moses. Because very often they would not admit that their grumbling against Moses was actually grumbling against God. Yeah. Moses, Moses would have to remind them, you have not, uh, you have not come against us. Your complaint is not against us. It's against the Lord. And they didn't, they often had to be reminded of that, but here mm. they are coming to Moses admitting yeah. that the reason why they have sinned is because they have spoken against the Lord right. and against you, Moses. So right. they know they have spoken against the Lord and they say, pray to the Lord that he might take away the serpents from us. Yeah. So Moses prayed for the people and God does not take the serpents away. At least that's not what it says he did. That's true. Yeah. He doesn't they take got, the serpents away. God does not take the serpents away. Instead, the, uh, the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. Shall live. So Moses mm. made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. So you look. see, yes. uh, you see that Jesus is drawing several parallels here. First of all, he says that the son of man must be lifted up mm -hmm. just like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. So the, the serpent is a kind of Jesus here. Mm -hmm. The serpent is a kind of Jesus being lifted up on a pole. And Jesus says, uh, yeah. this must happen so that anyone who believes in him, everyone who believes in him might have eternal life. Right. And uh, in in Numbers 21, the parallel to believing is looking. Right. And so looking at the serpent is a kind of believing in Jesus, according so to I want I don't want to elaborate. I want to elaborate right now on the look. Yeah, the look. So so you know, we've talked about this before, and and I've preached on this before too. Um, what kind of a look was it? Was there a technique in the look? Was there a, you think about how many of these people were spread out, thousands of Israelites were spread out all over the, all over the land at the time, and these snakes were everywhere. And maybe some of these, obviously some of these people had to go quite a distance to get to the pole to look after they were bitten. So you got to think about it. I mean, did they get dressed up nice or, you know, and they're bit by the serpent that they get in their best suit, uh, um, put their bark, bur burka, whatever on and run mm. and they're all sweaty and or were they walking very nicely? I don't know the children and I know you've been bitten, but don't walk very nice because you want to get all sweaty when we look at this pole and go to church and look at this pole. No, we want to go to church and be nice and tidy. No, they were desperate. Mm -hmm. They were desperate. Imagine if we're on the desert, we get bit by a rattlesnake. We don't. We don't make sure that you know we get all dressed up nice and head on to the hospital to get antivenom. No, we just hop in the car and take off. Yeah, we're scared. We're desperate. Yeah, we, we go as fast as we can. And translate mm -hmm. this to salvation. I, I, I've said this before when I'm sitting in church, let's say, for instance, let's say I'm contemplating suicide. Okay. I'm just analogy here of someone contemplating suicide in, in church and they come to church and they're, they're listening to the nice music and they're listening to everything and all that. And, you know, they're going to listen to the sermon and it's okay. But yet at the same time, I mean, he looking at his watch going, you know, when I leave here, I'm killing myself. So what have you got for me to save me here? Because I'm dying. But we as Christians just don't like to get messy. 
And when they came, when they got bitten by the serpent, man, they, they, they didn't care if they got messy. All they cared about was getting to that pole where Moses put it up and looking at it because they believed because they didn't have any other choice. They were going to die because they saw all their friends dying around them. Mm -hmm. And they just got bit. And I'm like, okay, what's my only chance? Suck the venom out? No, that doesn't work. Try that, maybe. Uh, but let's get to the pole. Let's get to the serpent on the pole. And let's let's right. get there. Let's get there as fast as we can. Come on, honey. Take the kids. Let's go. Let's get to that serpent on a pole. And I know it's kind of weird, but that's what Moses said. And God told Moses, so let's get there. And when they got there, it wasn't a, it wasn't a look like, oh, now just bend down on just one knee, not both knees, just one knee. No, it wasn't just, no, there's no rules. It was just look. Just look. Yeah. Just look. And what grace that is. Wow. What a wonder, what a wonderful picture of faith in Christ that is. Because yeah. they didn't do anything to build the bronze serpent. They're not the ones who put it on the pole. Mm. They're not the ones who provided this. And they don't have to do any work to receive the healing. All yeah. they're instructed to do is look. Look. All you have to do is look. And that is the kind of faith in Jesus that God wants us to have too. But they had to be desperate. They had to know they were going to die. Yeah. Yeah. They had to and acknowledge what, what, what about need. people today? I mean, you ask, do you believe in Jesus? Oh, sure, I believe in Jesus. Yeah, but really, I mean, do you believe you're going to die without Jesus? you believe in hell? Do you want to go to hell? No, nobody wants to go to hell. But mm -hmm. really, what does it mean if you really believed in hell? If you They'd really be believed, you would be desperate. You would be desperate. And these people are desperate. They're desperate because they've been bitten and they're dying. And uh, even the people who haven't been bitten, they think they could be bitten. And yeah. like, so they're still in danger and they're saying, you know, please take the serpents away. <laughs> we're, yeah. we're, we're in danger, you know, now, you know, last time we, uh, last time we made the connection, why is Jesus being depicted as the serpent? Because serpent right. is negative imagery. Right. And we, we, we drew the conclusion that, Jesus is being depicted as a serpent because on the cross, Jesus became sin for us mm. who knew no sin, that in no. him, we might become the righteousness of God. And, uh, and I, th I think that mm. that is correct, but it, isn't it interesting that in this story in Numbers 21, what is the image that God puts up on the pole for the people to look at so that they can be healed? It is the image of the thing that is killing them. It's, the, it's the image. And it's, mm -hmm. it, and I should say, it's not specifically their sin. Rather, it is the punishment of God that, okay. he, that he, for their sin. So what they're looking at is not their sin per se, mm. but God's judgment for their sin that he has appointed for them. And they look up at the punishment that God has appointed. Mm. And uh, it's similar when we look up at Jesus at the cross, because what we are seeing is Jesus being punished for our sin. And that is the punishment that we deserve. It is specifically mm. the judgment of God for our sin that we are looking at on the cross. So in and, a sense, Jesus became bitten for us yeah jesus jesus was the one afflicted oh wait us. if we would put it in perspective uh uh the snakes were biting the people sin yeah the, well the snakes this this the snakes aren't our sin the snakes are, are god's what? wrath the snakes are god's wrath they're his judgment they're okay yeah so god is punishing the people for their sin with the snakes the snakes are the wrath of god well that would make sense because god's wrath was put upon his son yes. on the cross yes god's wrath for our sin for our sin right oh a lot of people don't like that right yeah a lot of people don't like the fact that god could do that um, mm -hmm. so what you have to see when you're looking at the cross 
believing in Jesus is you have to see God's wrath against your sin being poured out on his son. Mm. It is, Mm. it is the serpent that should have bitten you that is on that cross biting Jesus. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. It is, it is the wrath of God and the judgment of God against you and for what you've done, but Jesus is bearing it instead. He, Mm. and and that is how he became our sin. He became a curse for us to redeem us from the curse of the law. So it says, uh, the Lord said to Moses, make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole and everyone who is bitten when he sees it shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. Now this word pole is the word nace in Hebrew. And it is the only time in this passage right here where it's mentioned twice is the only time in the whole Hebrew Bible where English versions render it a pole. Mm. Uh, It, uh, the other 19 times that it appears in the Bible, it is, uh, it is rendered with words like standard banner signal, uh, even sale or warning, but really it is, it is a flagpole is what it is. It's not just any pole. It's like a military banner is what it is. Mm. And so you imagine what this thing would have been, you know, what, what is a, what does a military banner look like? You know, you, you imagine. Oh, yeah. You imagine the ones like in the movies, yeah, the ones in like the movies, right? right? It's a very high pole. And what is the purpose of a military banner? Well, you want you want the enemy in to see it. You want the enemy to see it, want, and you want your soldiers to your see soldiers it, to see it, so that they know where to gather. Right? right it's right. like come gather around. This is where this is where we're taking our stand. This is our mm-hmm. signal, right? And uh, and so it's very interesting where you see this word come up again in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, for instance, in Isaiah 11, verse 10. Listen to this. This is amazing. Isaiah 11, verse 10. Isaiah says, In that day, the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples. Boom. That word signal is the word nace. He will stand as a banner, a, you know, and, and listen to what he says here. So he's talking about the root of Jesse. And who is that? The root of Jesse is the Messiah, Mm -hmm. you know? So the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal for the peoples. Well, Jesse was David's father. Yeah. The root of Jesse, the root of Jesse, the root of Jesse is, is a, is a, uh, is a messianic phrase. It's a messianic term. So the descendant of David and Jesse, Mm -hmm. who will be the Messiah. Right. And Isaiah. Yeah. So the root of Jesse, who shall stand as a signal for the peoples, of him shall the nations inquire and his resting place shall be glorious two verses later he will raise a signal for the nations that is yahweh will yahweh will raise a signal for the nations and will assemble the banished of israel and gather the dispersed of judah from the four corners of the earth so i mean you you think that isaiah might have the serpent on a pole in his mind when he uses the word nace here mm. and saying the Messiah will stand as a nace. He will well, stand as a signal. Well, he, he, he will he, be, he, he will be raised up on a he pole. Knew, he knew about it. He will be raised up on a pole yeah, and he, be a signal for mm-hmm. the Gentiles and the Gentiles mm-hmm. will gather to him when they see it, when they see. Oh, because he's, he's prophesying this. He's prophesying this. Right, yeah. Right. Mm. He's prophesying this. The Gentiles will see the Messiah who is being raised up as a banner, as a signal on a pole. And when they see this, they will gather to him mm. and they will their the, their and his resting place will be glorious when the Gentiles inquire after him. And uh, yeah. And this comes up again and again in Isaiah. It's, it's marvelous. So in Isaiah 49, Verse 22. Now, Isaiah 49 is a messianic chapter. You have to read it from the beginning to see that this is the Messiah being talked about in Mm -hmm. chapter 49. 
And listen to what it says in verse 22 of Isaiah 49. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I will lift up my hand to the nations and raise my signal to the peoples. Mm -hmm. And they shall bring your sons in their arms and your daughters shall be carried on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So I will raise my nace. I mean, this is, this is really clearly connecting the idea of the nace the pole on which the serpent was raised in numbers 21 to the Messiah. So mm. the Messiah will become a nace, a banner, a flagpole for the peoples. You know, it's interesting. I wanted to say something about this banner that you've been saying and it's how it was raised up during yeah. battles um, so that your own, your own soldiers could see it. Yeah. Um, it was all, it's also, it, it's interesting. I see this in movies. Um, whenever the flag mm -hmm. dropped, let's say the flag bearer got shot or stabbed or killed and yeah. the flag was dropped, it was so important. I never really got this until just now. It was so important for someone to pick that flag up and raise it up because that was a signal if the flag went down that it, it made the whole army uh, um, lose faith right and so that flag lifted up was a indication that we're winning keep right. moving on keep moving on keep pressing on we're winning so yeah. it's in a sense we go back to our our struggle on our faith and how we know we're christians is that we struggle we we press on we 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 during tribulation we don't fall away and just give up right and just you know, I don't believe in God anymore. I, you know, I believe in God, but he didn't give me my new car, whatever. <laughs> no, you, you yeah, press we don't on. Quit. We, we don't, don't quit. quit. We press on. And that banner thing is kind of interesting that, and what is our banner? Christ. Mm. Lift it up. I will draw all men on to me. I will. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, yeah. and Jesus says that later on in the gospel too. He says, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all draw men unto all myself. Men unto me. He is definitely, I think, referring back to Isaiah and talking about the banner, the signal yeah. to the nations. And, uh, you know, and Isaiah uses the same word that Moses used in Numbers 21. That's not a coincidence. Mm -hmm. That's not a coincidence. So he is raised up and draws all nations, mm -hmm. all men to himself when they, when they look when they look like they looked in the wilderness at the serpent on the pole, when they look. And, you know, I do think that uh, Moses raised it up on a banner that was high enough and tall enough for all the people to see wherever they were. So you're talking yeah, about there, was, there, was th there were thousands of people. Yeah, and... there were thousands. Yeah, there were thousands. And it was just so a little, it was just a little snake. It was only about five, six inches long. Yeah. According, according to the historians. But, yeah, um, five or six inches long. Yeah, but but uh, but they looked. Uh, but Moses lifted it up above their heads mm. on a military banner, a flagpole. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <clears throat> and which probably had a cross piece, by the way, at the top for the. Oh, yeah, that's sail. that's our that's our symbol of the voice of the wind. It's got yeah. the serpent on the cross. Yeah, exactly. It had a. It <sighs> must have had a cross piece. On the top for the serpent to hang from or to the hang from, yeah, wrap or around to, or to be on top of. Yeah. You know, I'm looking at a picture right now of ancient Egyptian banners and uh, like military standards. And uh, like all of them have a cross piece at the top top for the, for the, and it's usually not a flag, it's usually a statue of something. And this is the interesting thing it's usually a statue of a god. So I'm looking at uh, a military banner with an image of uh, the sun rising over the horizon, which would have been Ra, the god of the sun. And I'm looking at uh, a flagpole with, uh, with a bird on top and a flagpole of a dog on top. And these would have all been different Egyptian deities. And then I see a flagpole with uh, an image of Pharaoh on the top. And on top of Pharaoh's turban, you have an image of Osiris, 
the eye of Osiris mm. because uh, Pharaoh was supposed to be the son of Osiris. He was the son of a god. Well, in and, Second in Second Kings, where Hezekiah destroys the serpent on the pole, mm -hmm. uh, the reason one of the reasons that he destroyed it, other than it wasn't it was meant to be temporary, was that there was a lot of other gods that were on, I believe, poles or they were yeah. snake type gods that people were worshiping. Yeah, in Second Kings eighteen, yeah. so. and there were Asherah poles too. Right. And, and other things oh, like the, that. The God of Ashra, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but what is interesting, the other thing that's on top of the turban besides the eye of Osiris, because Pharaoh was the son of Osiris, uh, is you have a little cobra popping out, snake. a snake popping out on top of his head. And mm. this image of Pharaoh's head with the turban and the eye of Osiris and the snake is all resting on top of this pole and then they would raise it up as a military banner and this is their this is their signal really yeah hmm. and so isn't that interesting that jesus is making this connection to himself and he is the son of god he much more than pharaoh ever was yeah he is the son of god and he is the serpent who will be hmm. raised up on the pole and uh, I mean, they, they had just come from Egypt and this is an Egyptian military banner. So interesting. it's interesting that even back yeah. then, even back then, I wonder if they could have put two and two together and said, wow, you know, this is where gods normally go. God mm -hmm. isn't saying that he is a serpent raised up on a pole for us to right. heal us. Is he, well, maybe somebody, <clears throat> maybe somebody put that together and said, well, maybe Isaiah did. Maybe Isaiah was putting it together in his prophecy. Mm. Maybe that's why he used the word. All right. So I'm going to try the screen share. I want to see okay. if this works. Okay. Tell me what you see. Ah, there it is. Cool. You see it? <clears throat> yeah. I see the, I see the bird. I see, mm -hmm. I see the Egyptian God. I see the cat. Yep. I see which. But look, look, look at how frequent. Yeah, the, use the a image. cross type of thing. There's a cross type of thing. Mm -hmm. See, that's what mm -hmm. I was saying. And now look, look at, look at this. Mm -hmm. uh, do you see what that is right there? That the that the dog is standing on. It looks like a snake. It's a snake. And mm -hmm. now look at these two things right here. What are those? The, the cobra. Two cobras, right? Yeah. Yep. And now and look at over cobra. here. There is a cobra. Yep. A snake yep. coming out of Pharaoh's mm -hmm. head. So it's interesting that the idea of a snake on top of a banner pole mm. is, you know, something very common in Egypt. It's something that the yeah. Israelites would have been familiar with. But uh, now you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, that was really cool. If you can do that more often, that'd be really neat. Mm -hmm. it, does the people see that? No, if, if you're listening on the podcast, uh, uh, you, you would not have been able to see that. You have to watch it on YouTube. But isn't isn't it interesting that that people kind of just I know I've done it when I've when I've read John three and Nicodemus and Born Again and all that I've always kind of just brushed over the serpent on a pole thing yeah and just gone to oh God so loved the world that gave His only begotten Son that but this mm -hmm. serpent on a lifted up on a pole Jesus refers to that right after he refers to becoming born again and it's like yeah. the wind um mm -hmm. the next thing he brings up is as moses lifted up a serpent in the wilderness so must the son of man be lifted up it's like yeah really so i hope we have explained well this is what a, we, a little bit this is what people believe when they are born again this is what yeah. they believe you know jesus says this will happen to me uh, so that everybody who believes in me mm. might have eternal life. So in other words, just like they had to look at the serpent on the pole in the wilderness, we have to look to the cross. And mm. if we look at the cross in faith, we will be healed and we mm. will live and not die, but our life will be eternal. And where's our life? Yeah. <laughs> where's our life? Where is that? What do you mean? Where is that? 
Where are we're we? on the cross with him. Oh. Our life was crucified with Christ. Come oh. on, I wrote a song about it. <laughs> yeah. Jesus, my Lord. Yeah, yeah. I, on the cross, I daily rest with you, Jesus. I mean, what is it? What is it? Romans? It says that. Paul says in Romans, um, we were crucified with Christ. Yeah. He says that in Romans 6 and Galatians chapter 2. Yeah. yeah. So we, we, our life is hidden in God now with, with God in heaven even. But on the cross, when we're looking at the cross with Christ, doesn't he poor Jesus up there? <laughs> but we're there with him. We're there with him. Yeah. And if you're not, you're in trouble. Yeah. We're in trouble. If we don't see ourselves in Christ when he was crucified. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So his death was our death. His resurrection was our resurrection. We are so united to him that we were there on the cross with him. We were buried in the tomb with him through baptism um, and we were raised to new life with him. And we are seated together with him in heavenly places at the right hand of the father. Um, so we are with him in victory now. And when he appears, we shall appear with him ooh. in glory. Amen. So there's like, so the, his cross is our cross his death was our death. There is just, there's so much to dwell on and meditate on right here. It is, it is. And, yeah. and I, I just, I'm reading from where we talked earlier um, a month ago or more. Uh, we know we are born again when Christ becomes more than a good topic of conversation, a yeah. great awakening must happen in our soul. And then that, when that happens, he becomes more than even a Bible study. And miraculously, he becomes yeah. a treasure of great price, even worth yeah. dying for. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, that's good. And then you wanted to talk about dad. because oh, God man. was showing you. God was showing you some stuff from Second Kings when you discovered uh, and studying. We don't, have, just... we don't have time for this. Oh, sure we do. <laughs> Man, sure this we is, do. I mean, so you, we were, we were going to talk about the serpent on the pole and you mm. were reading second Kings and you made an interesting discovery in second Kings about the serpent on the, that Moses raised up on the pole. And well, I, well, maybe David's, you would David's, like to talk about that. Yeah. David's son, Hezekiah became King. Yeah. And he's going around and he sees, he goes into the temple of Ashra, right? Or were the a lot of the gods of Asherah were in there, and he saw he saw the serpent on a pole. Yeah. <laughs> and what did he do? He goes. It's almost like he he went. Hey, this ain't supposed to be in here, among all these other gods. <laughs> he destroyed it. Yeah. And so, you know, and so it's like it, it was like a, 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 a an awakening for me. Like, wow, he destroyed it wait a minute, that ties me back to something else. Wasn't in 70 AD, didn't they destroy the temple mm, that had yeah. the, that had the uh, um, Ark of the Covenant in? Mm, they yeah. destroyed that. Jesus, because yep. Jesus prophesied that. And according to a lot of Christians out there, and I might be hitting a sore topic here, but that's the temple that they tithe to, yeah. right? Yeah. And so if, <laughs> if, if they, if they did, if Hezekiah destroyed the snake, the bronze serpent, and then mm. Jesus later prophesied the destruction of the temple, which was a glorious temple that had been there for hundreds of years, hundreds mm. of years. And I can understand that, you know, wow, you become really attached to that temple, um, yeah. but to have it destroyed and not just destroyed, not one stone left upon another yeah to get the gold i mean yeah. that's another another interesting phenomenon that they did the romans did to get all the gold out yep filling jesus's prophecy to the fulfilling to the letter uh, but yeah. I said, you know it, you know i've heard preachers tell me this over i went to churches many many times i've done hundreds of concerts in churches mm. and i would say at least 70 percent of those churches would say this temple that we're this church that we're standing in is now the temple. Mm. And I'm like, what? 
what? Yeah, this is where you tithe to. You tithe to this building on For this ministry, four, yeah. Fourth and Hennepin, whatever it was. Yeah. You know, uh, no, wait a minute. D didn't didn't Stefan die? I, I'm I'm reading here. Uh, uh, Stefan's message was not received well because he spoke about another temple. Yeah. One built without hands. Yep. He spoke about another temple, one that Almighty God, mm -hmm. the, uh, this blows my mind, Almighty God, the, I mean, in his presence is the fullness of joy, at his right hand are pleasures forevermore, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't need us, uh, mm -hmm. but he chose, he could have anything he wanted, the, as beautiful as that temple was that they worshiped in, the one that Solomon made. It's beautiful. The gold was in there that was immeasurable. Yeah. The amount of gold that was in that temple was amazing. Yeah. He chose, he, he destroyed that yep. to what? To to well where? To well in us. Yeah. Right here. Mm -hmm. He chose these, these sinful, these sinful fleshly children of God to dwell in. Yeah. These sheep that make mistakes and and sin and mess up and and beg for forgiveness and yes just look to me but i'm dwelling here now a mm -hmm. and it's it's no longer a building buildings can't save us yeah it's yeah. going to a, a structure is great but jesus has never cast a demon out of a building he mm -hmm. cast demons out of people yeah this is this is the warfare right here guys is 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 not a building no, it, it's right here between our eyes, between our ears. This is the mm -hmm. warfare where we're fighting right now. It's right here because he tried to kill me a year ago. Mm -hmm. So, and I'm here to testify, this is the warfare yeah. right here. Buildings, that doesn't scare the devil. Make it as nice as you want. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. bother him. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to say that. that that's, that's, that's a profound yeah, so I'm going to read from 2 Kings 18, uh, talking about Hezekiah when he came to the throne. He was 25 years old when he began to reign. Uh, yeah. And it says, he did what was right in the eyes of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, had done. He removed the high places, which is yeah. What, where... what is that? What does that mean, the high places? I always wonder about so that. So the high places were additional temples, altars, places that uh, the children of Israel would worship false gods. Oh. So, so like, wow. of course, you know, in the law of Moses, you're only supposed to worship at one altar. There's only supposed to be one temple on one mountain, period. Okay. So to worship oh. Yahweh, to worship Yahweh, no matter where you live, you have to gather to Jerusalem or wherever the temple was because, you know, before David, it wasn't in Jerusalem. It was in Shiloh, and and uh, okay. and then in the ark got captured by the Philistines. It ended up in another place. Mm -hmm. But uh, the, the point is, there was only supposed to be one altar because they only worship one God. And it was only supposed to be in one central location. And so three times a year for the feasts, you know, Passover and, and uh, Pentecost and, and all these other feasts, mm -hmm. the children of Israel would have to gather to the temple, to the same altar, and worship one God together. Okay. All so, right. so, but of course, they were disobedient. And shocker, shocker. <laughs> and so, what did they do? They built additional temples, additional altars on additional mountains, high places, you know, wow. other okay. than Jerusalem, other than Jerusalem, because Jerusalem was on top of a mountain, right? So they were supposed to all gather to Jerusalem, the mountain of God, mm. to worship Yahweh, one God. Instead, they build it on other high places, other mountains, other hills, and they worship other gods. Oh, at different places? At different places. At different, okay, different locations? Okay. So that they wouldn't have to travel to Jerusalem for the feasts. Oh, and, no. Seriously? And, and obey Yahweh. <laughs> so they didn't want to travel all that way. They didn't want to get messy on the way. Hey, we're going back to messy. Right. All that, that, so they so they built their own little church on 7th and Hennepin. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you just tied here. 
Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, like, okay, so Jesus says in John chapter four to the woman at the well, the day is coming and now is when yeah. you shall neither in Jerusalem nor on this hill worship the father. Mm. Um, and, but those oh, who worship, but those, tie who that worship, together. those who worship the you father, just tied that, you just tied that together. Right. With, with the high places. Right. So you see, so, oh. so those who worship the father, uh, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. So in other words, um, in other words, the time is changing. Jesus says to this woman, the time is changing. Now the temple is wherever you are. Now mm. the gathering place is wherever you are. You know, now mm. the spirit of God is going to dwell in you, you will be living stones, like Peter says, built mm. up together into a dwelling place of God through the Holy Spirit. So we are the temple now. You so know, but, all uh, alone, Paul, all alone, dying in a prison, or even John dying alone on Patmos. He was he was the temple. He was the temple. Yeah. Amazing. Just amazing. Yeah amazing yeah. so that but before of course before that before jesus comes and makes that huge change mm -hmm. you know there is a temple right you know and so they are supposed to mm -hmm. gather around one temple worshiping one god you mm -hmm. know because this is a different time and instead they build all these different high places and they worship other gods mm -hmm. and they do so kind of in secret right because they're all living in their own country, their own region, and and they all have their own temple worshiping their own gods. It's very bad. Mm. But anyway, here mm. comes Hezekiah, you know, the great reformer, one of the few righteous kings of Judah, son of David, mm. uh, a type of the Messiah, really. He's kind of a foreshadowing of Jesus. Oh, and yeah. so he removed the high places and broke the pillars and cut down the Asherah, Ashra was a goddess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made. For until those days, the days of Hezekiah, the people of Israel had made offerings to it. Yeah. They started, oh, yeah. Listen, another, this is another topic here. Good. They yeah. started worshiping. What are we, what are we doing? Some of our churches, I'm not going to say what religions. But they still worship the cross, physical cross they have in their church, big ones with Jesus hanging on it. Right. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of Scary Christians. Have, stuff. A lot of Christians have had problems with that throughout history because they're afraid it's idolatry. Yeah. You know, and I, and I think that at least at times it does border on idolatry. You, you know so what I like? We're gonna know, learn. Okay. You know what I like about a cross that doesn't have Jesus on it. That's the he's only kind of cross that, that he's not there anymore. He's not there anymore. <laughs> and when he comes back, guess what? He's not coming back as a baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's we not, like the Jesus we can control. We can Little control baby, baby Jesus. Or a baby hang, or Jesus hanging on a cross. We got you yeah. there. We Just stay right there. You're good. Right. No, no, he's not there he's anymore. Not there he's not there anymore. Risen. He's risen. He's risen. Yeah. Why do you look for the living among the dead? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but so, yeah, getting back, so I'm if sorry. We, if we're going to learn track. anything, if we're going to learn anything from this passage, we have to yeah. learn just how prone the human heart is to idolatry. To idolatry. We are so, so weak and prone to fall into mm. that sin. And, uh, and this is what they're doing here. You know, that's why I look back and wonder, maybe they did pick up on the fact that usually a God is what's put on top of a banner. You know, in Egypt, they were putting their gods on top of a banner. Maybe this serpent is a god, you know, mm. and so they start making offerings to it and they start bowing down to it and they start worshiping it and offering incense wow. to it. And Yeah, you got to think. I mean, this this serpent healed all the people of Israel when they were getting bit by snakes. Yeah, it could be a god. Maybe it's a god. Right. And so there's it's so, it's amazing. <laughs> god does things for his people in grace mm. and his people always go astray in one of two directions. They either grumble and say, we, we don't like this manna that you've given us, God. We wish we could mm. go back to Egypt. Or we say, wow, this, this thing you gave us is amazing. God, 
let's worship it, (laughs) bow down to it and make it a God. They gave this thing a name, uh, Nehushtan, which sounds like bronze and serpent, you know? And so they, they really, they gave it a name. They gave it a name. It was called Nehushtan. Yeah. It sounds like the Hebrew for both bronze and serpent. Wow. Yeah. Just so say they, that over, just say that a hundred times and everything will be good. Right. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But so we're, we're so prone to idolatry. Mm. So Jesus is saying, you know, basically the, the true source, the true source of your uh, salvation, the true giver of grace is me. So don't, mm. you know, don't look to the old way. Don't look to the serpent. Don't look to Moses. Look to me. So, yeah, that's the, that's what I wanted to close on mm-hmm. was what are y'all looking at? Right. What are we looking at? Mm-hmm. I mean, is it the pastor of your church? Cause he's fallible. Mm-hmm. Is it your, your new rock star singer, Christian singer? Cause he's fallible. Um, television. Television is nice entertainment, but it it's not going to save us, not going to save you. And and your girlfriend, your wife, I mean, as much as you might love them and and family, that doesn't save you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's beautiful to have. It's sometimes helpful. And and like for us, it's good to have, right? Mm-hmm. Teachings. But when you when you start to worship teaching, yeah. when you start to worship uh, the church you go to, I'm not saying that the, the the God that you might get from church uh, or a teaching, that's all great. But when you start worshiping the pencil, and it just does the writing. That's all mm-hmm. the pencil does. That's all we are. Is, pencils remember keith green using that term i'm just a pencil stop yeah, worshiping we're in, me we're the instrument in his we're, hand we're the he's instrument the in the hand yeah he's so the it's, that's 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 the answer and mm-hmm. if you're looking at anything else but christ and what he did for us then you're looking at the wrong place yeah because he is the only one. He's the, I'm writing a new song right now called, uh, um, It's All Because of You. It's All Because of Him. Um, mm. And well, I, that, that's not the term of it. What is what I write? I'm writing a song. I know I'm writing a song. I just can't remember what it is. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's all about you. That's the name of the song. All about, It's all about you. I yeah. mean, we have so many things that we think gives us life. Yeah. Trust me, I was supposed to be dead in a hospital Mm. a year ago and with christ and the doctors which happen to be a christian um not saying that unsaved doctors can't help you just saying it's ironic that this guy was a christian he's a really cool guy yeah saved my life but i mean jonathan you were there Mm -hmm. when i was on the ventilator i didn't know you were there but yeah you were there watching me not knowing if I was going to live or die. Yeah. In fact, the doctors said he probably ain't gonna, isn't going to come off the ventilator. So yeah. singing, here I am. Singing uh, Keith Green songs and singing your songs and uh, praying over you. And mm. yeah, you did squeeze my hand once. I did? Yeah. Wow. You did squeeze my hand once, but uh, you have no memory of that. Mm-mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. that's a I was, spirit i was so uh that's pretty cool i was so overwhelmed huh. yeah so glad you're here what'd you say to me that i squeeze your hand remember? i don't remember i was talking to you i was saying hey mm-hmm. dad it's jonathan i'm here you know mm-hmm. and uh i thought you did squeeze my hand and i was mm-hmm. wondering if you knew i was there but you have no memory of that no yeah no, and it wasn't until I looked at my, my wife took a picture of me on, Lynn took a picture of me on the ventilator. Because so when I got off the ventilator, I was just really angry. 
I was just like, couldn't move my hands. I'm what's going on and angry at everything. And, and Lynn looked at me and she goes, do you, do you want to die? And I went, I didn't think about it. Man, it'd be easy to just slip away. And then she showed me the picture of me on a ventilator and I just started crying, my little baby. It's like, you know, we really think we've got it together. We really do. We think, we think that God needs us so bad to accomplish what he needs to get accomplished. But he did more for me and my family. Me laying there almost dying on a ventilator than he did when I was alive. <laughs> think about it. I mean, if he would have accomplished all the stuff that he did when I was on a ventilator, if he would have accomplished that when I was awake yeah boy all those prayers that i prayed all these years yeah yep. all these prayers i prayed i'd even take credit for that yeah man i want to i want us to talk about that uh in more detail in a future episode okay yeah uh, because I, I i know you're going you're going somewhere to do a concert right where are you going yeah minnesota yeah, what, what part of Minnesota? Uh, Austin, Minnesota. Good friend of mine, uh, Rick Moe and Robin Moe at the Church of, uh, they just started this church. What is it? Uh, Austin Church on Fire. <laughs> that's right. Is that, is that what it's called? Yeah, that's, that's Austin Church on Fire. Austin Church on Fire. Just, just don't send the fire trucks because it's not literally on fire. It's not literally, yeah. <laughs> don't call the fire department. Yeah. Don't call the fire department. Rick will get a yeah. kick out of this. <laughs> but uh, so so you'll be there. And when will you uh, be there? Uh, June 12th. June 12th. And you're doing a concert and you're going to yeah. be sharing part of your testimony. Going to be sharing the testimony. Yeah. Um, and you're going to be doing your music. And in a, in a future episode, I would like to go over uh, some of the testimony that you plan on sharing yeah. at, that, at that concert. Okay. Yeah. And uh, just ask you some of, to share some of the things that God has been uh, teaching you and laying on your heart. I know it's going to be all related to stuff you went through last year, you know? Yeah. 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 And, yeah. yeah. That will, that'll be intense, but I think it's a good thing to, mm -hmm. is a good thing to share with people. It's hard to do because it's hard to do without starting to just cry. I know. And yeah. ball your brains out. It's, it's really hard. Yeah. But I can edit it out. <laughs> just, yeah i'm just I'll make well, I'm, you I'm, I'm actually i'm actually talking about doing the concert it's going to be really hard for me to do this concert and share yeah especially looking at my wife sitting there yeah the, the, what the she lord went will, through what she went through during that yeah. time the lord will amazing help you. the lord will help yeah. you the lord right. will help you I, I know he'll i know he'll strengthen you and he'll give you the words to say yeah it's it's something you know we're not just speaking for ourselves right we're not just sharing mm. We're not just sharing these things for our own benefit. Mm. You know, we believe, we believe that the Lord is going to use this to bless and help somebody else. And, uh, and that His and word that, would not return void. That his word will I not return that, void. And that, a lot for this broadcast. Yeah, that all of all of our tears are in a bottle, in His bottle, mm. and that He uh, doesn't waste a single one. Oh, He's that got a all, big bottle for me. That's a big yeah. bottle. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Well, I look forward to that. All right, Dad. Love you. All right. Love you too. Bye-bye. See ya. Thanks for joining us on Voice of the Wind. Leave a like or a comment, or subscribe if you're on YouTube, or write us a review if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, and share this with your friends. Hope you can join us next time. Hey.